Hi, I'm Jim W6LG, your YouTube Elmer. Welcome to my radio room here in Rockland, California. In the last few days, I've engaged in discussing with some guys um, the advantages of, or maybe more the disadvantages of RG8X and the advantages of larger diameter coax. And it's been a bit of a discussion um, came along with a guy who put a uh, hamstick on a tripod, which is a really good idea, uh, something that I've done before. And his feline was RG, or is RG8X, and he's on 10 meters with it. And one of the things I wanted to mention to him was that there are other coaxes that might be a better choice. In his case, it's um, not a really long run, so it, in the scheme of things, it may not matter much. Where you do have a longer run, let's say it's, let's pick a number, 100 feet, um, it is really a poor choice at 10 meters, 15 meters, and maybe even at 20 meters. Uh, losses can be very high, and then when you factor in what might be other things that contribute to loss at the antenna, um, I'd... I, I'm just of the opinion that I don't want to waste 50% of my power in the coax. I don't want to waste 40%. I don't even want to waste 10%. And to that end, look at some of the contestations and some of the guys who uh, work a lot of DX. And generally, you'll find larger diameter coax. By that, RG213, LMR400, which is roughly... Um, not quite half an inch, but four-tenths of an inch in diameter, down to guys who have gone for stuff that's... Yeah. Now, my coax is seven-eighths of an inch, so roughly an inch in diameter. Uh, some use inch and, inch and a half and larger coax. I ran uh, the larger diameter coax and LMR 400, and 400 max from DX Engineering for a couple of reasons. I wanted to reduce the noise as much as I could. The coax is running through the attic. The 400 max has been really good at noise reduction because of the way it's constructed. Um, and I've got a, a 100 foot piece over here that I'm gonna test in just a few minutes. So without belaboring the point, um, I thought it would be interesting to do a test again. And I, I bring it up because the most important part of your station is the feed line. It's not the microphone, the microphone cable, and how pretty it is. It's not even the transceiver. Uh, and it is the antenna system in that system of things where you've got coax and coax switches and um, uh, antenna tuners, so called antenna tuners, and amplifiers and all kinds of other things. In that scheme of things, going to the antenna, you've got all these boxes. So the feed line becomes critically important. Short jumpers can be made out of high quality coax. Um, really long runs, it really is a necessity. If you want to cut down on noise and you want to deliver as much power to the antenna as you can, um, because it's also, also reciprocal on receive. If, if, you're losing half the transmitted power in that feed line. You're losing half the received signal also. Um, there's nothing to, and many guys have really disagreed with what I've had to say about this. I don't want to lose dBs anywhere. I don't want to lose a dB here, a dB there, another dB here, because pretty soon you're at 3 dB and you're, you're at half power. So I try very hard to eliminate as many losses as I can in the system, um, especially here where I'm on a small residential lot now with a relatively small antenna compared to the Yegas I had side by side on Wolf. And I've got to deliver as much power to that antenna and get as much receive signal out of it as I can. The coax has to run through the attic. There is no other way to do it. This house is on a slab, and uh, there's no way to go around the perimeter on the outside of the house easily. 
And so I chose to go through the attic. Up in the attic, there are all these sources of noise. Um, if you think back to uh, an interview I did with uh, Tim Duffy, K3LR, who is the CEO of DX Engineering, um, he uses a large diameter coax, and he doesn't allow anyone to bring any kind of power supply onto the property. This is switching supply. And when I kind of quizzed him on that, um, he bristled just a bit because he doesn't want any noise in his station being generated by the guys who show up. You can imagine he's got 5, 10, 15, maybe 20 guys there. I, I don't know how many, but I don't know. I think he's got like five or six operating positions. And if they all brought in uh, uh, charges for their cell phones and other things and they plugged them in, it's not the current draw, it's the noise that those switching supplies make. Um, so he doesn't allow it. He's got, apparently he's got like a box at the door. You leave your, your power supply at the door. And I pushed him on it just a bit and he was absolutely adamant that no, he won't allow it. So um, do you need to keep your noise floor as low as you can get it? Yeah, as best you can. I'm trying to eliminate as many power supplies in this room. Also, I'm going to do a test of power supplies in another video. I'm going to line them up in a strip and I've got a loop antenna I made to go around it to see how much noise I can pick up from those things. Back to coax, because that's the point of this. Uh, I'm going to do a couple things. I'm going to, um, I've got two watt meters, two bird watt meters, 250 watt slugs, going to put 250 watts into one end. And then I'm going to switch between RG8X and uh, 400 max from DX Engineering. And we'll measure the loss and see where that falls. Also, um, where's my uh, Christmas present? I bought a, um, oh, here it is. <sighs> Old age. Um, this is a, um, let's see if I can hold it up for one of the cameras. Um, from, uh, bought it from a dealer in the States, uh, paid uh, regular retail for it. It's a, um, a rig expert. Uh, is, um, this is a Zoom uh, AA35 Zoom. And I, most of everything I do is, is at HF. Um, so what I also am going to do is I want to compare this to what I measure. Now, what I measure is going to have some inaccuracies built, in, inaccuracies built into it because of parallax and reading the meter. Um, and uh, it, so it won't be as accurate, I think, as this device. What I want to see is how close this comes to what I measure. And also, I want to look at some uh, uh, data sheets on, on coax. KB5R.com has a really neat one where you can, it's an online uh, calculator. You can plug in the coax you got and how long it is, then the SWR, uh, and get an idea what the loss is. So I'm going to compare to that too. Um, RG at X. Let me badmouth it just a bit. Um, at one point I was manufacturing some coax and I had the choice of any kind of coax I wanted to use, but it was a mobile installation and I had to order, I think it was 10,000 feet. The 10,000 feet they'd put any name on it I wanted and they would, any manufacturer would call it whatever I wanted. Um, I found a company that made a really good coax and I went with RG58 instead of RG8X. And the reason why I did that, there was no cost savings. In fact, the RG58 was more expensive than the RG8X. Um, but it was better constructed. There's no real good standard for RG8X. There was for RG58. So I could say, okay, build it to the standard of RG58 made by a certain company. And they did that. And I didn't want to mess with RG8X. When I looked at it and they sent samples, it was just garbage. It really was. And mostly the gray stuff was not very good. The black, just in a, for whatever it's worth, the black stuff was much better than the gray stuff. So let's measure that. Let's measure the loss using the two bird watt meters and my new friend here, the um, uh, rig expert, 
nice company, good instruction book. Even the box that comes in is nicely built. It's cut out to accept this thing so it won't ship. They don't, they don't need to put bubble wrap around it. The instructions are well written. Um, in fact, ICOM, Kenwood, Yesu, not Flex. Flex knows how to write a manual. Um, you guys take a look at the Rig Expert book and look how they lay it out and how they use relatively simple sentences to describe things and get the point across. And the color scheme of the book is great. It's just nicely done. Um, are there a few mistakes in, in English that maybe uh, you might say a little bit differently? Yeah, there are, but it's no problem. You can figure it all out. Enough of that. Let's go do the test. So I'm going to pause here. I've got a table set up. I'm going to hook it all up. We'll do the test and then we'll come back and I'll hook this up to, I think I'll do it mostly on 10 meters to the RG8X, the uh, 400 max and see how that compares to what the spec sheets say. And we'll go from there. So quick pause for station identification. This is W6LG. On the tall table next to me, I've set up a test stand. And what that is, is uh, two lengths of coax. One of them is RG8X, and the other is 400 max from DX Engineering. In both of the bird watt meters, I've set a 250 watt slug, so they're um, both going to have the same reading. And I've calibrated them so they're, that they're the same. Um, so the bird on the right gets the power. Uh, the switch determines which cable is being used, either the 8X or the 400 max. Meter on the left is the output meter, and that's the most important one. So I'm going to take a close-up of that and paste it up on the screen uh, next to the tube in post-production. Okay, so here we go. I'm going to set levels transmitting into the coax uh, through the bird watt meters until I get to 250 watts. Uh, out of the amplifier and right now I'm close um, and it's a solid state amp but I still have to be careful so uh, I've got to dial up the power slowly and it doesn't take much I think uh, somewhere around 20 to 30 watts is going to get me where I need to go all right uh, you can see the light bulb is glowing and I'm going to have to add a little more power I'm at about 200 watts now all right so 250 watts, um, okay, I'm there now, it's about 225 out. That's through the R, no, through the uh, 400 max, 250 watts yields about 225 watts, so a loss of 25 watts, and so that's uh, about 10%. All right, now I'm gonna switch to the RG8X, and key the transmitter. It should be close to 250. It is. And there's 200 watts out. So if I'm getting 200 watts out and I'm putting 250 in, that's a difference of 50 watts or roughly 20% of the power going into the cable. All right, next we're going to go to 10 meters and there the loss will be greater. 250 watts and 250 watts gives me about... Uh, 210, 220 watts uh, using the 400 max. And I'm going to flip the switches to go to the RG8X. By the way, that's a brand new roll or new old stock. Uh, about 155. So 95 watts of lost power on the RG8X. So we'll do the calculation, see what that percentage is. So let's go see what that, what that adds up to. And also, we're going to go look at KV5R's website and see what his loss calculator says. See if, they, see if it's pretty close, if it coincides with what I've tested here. Okay, there, um, KV5R uh, website has uh, roughly 69%, 70 or so. I measured roughly 60 uh, 61. So there's a pretty sizable difference between the build in RG8X 
and other coax. And you can just imagine how that loss increases as you go up in frequency. And probably when we get to two meters, it would be uh, like a dummy load. All right, now let's do one other thing. Let's use my new test instrument, the Rig Expert uh, 35, and see what it measures. I'll be shorting the far end, and we'll measure it with um, the RG8X. Okay, so I measured with the, uh, the dummy loads about 61% uh, efficiency. The Rig Expert says 64%, so somewhere in the range of 61 to 64% efficiency. And that's way too inefficient. Um, Heliax, for example, like I'm using, will have almost no loss at 10 meters. Thanks for watching. Think again before you hook up coax. There are other losses in the system that, that are going to occur. So in that kind of an antenna, you might have 50% effective radiant power, which I certainly don't want to give that up. I'm Jim W6LG, your YouTube Elmer. Thanks for watching. See you the next time. 7-3.